We good? We good? Check, 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 check. There All we right, go. Great. So are we rolling? Killed it, bro. I mean, thank you. That was hey, good. Thank that you was awesome. so much. I love talk, talking to dudes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, so what you talked about, nobody yeah. wants to talk about. Nobody wants to talk about it except for Robert, <laughs> except for Robert Morris. Yeah. The, so, the man. Like, well, and, and he's the man, because, and I, I'm going to tell you the secret real quick. Two years ago, we're at a dinner, and I go up and talk to him, and I just say, hey, look, just thank you so much for letting us be in your church. This is what God's been teaching me the last eight years. Wow. You got, you got two options, humble yourself or get humbled. That's it. There is no third option. It does <laughs> not exist. I actually agree with that. And he gets <laughs> his finger and he puts it in my chest. And he's a big dude, he right? He actually yeah, broke he, his sternum. And he, like, and he, <laughs> he did. I, it. I still remember. I don't think that sternum's getting, <laughs> no, 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 getting no. broken, bro. <laughs> but he, he put it in my chest and he goes, that's it. That's the secret. That and was I was like, like, Robert Morris says humility is the secret secret sauce and you just brought that it's the secret sauce man isn't that crazy i i think that the problem is is that we really don't it just takes a lot of hard work to be humble because i gotta constantly check it's my a motives discipline. it's a dis it's hard it's the tomorrow i could be filled with pride that fast or later today you could be right now after yeah. speaking to four thousand men that's rally exactly cry, right that's exactly right, right. that's that's yep. how fast it moves and it just, it takes a real arresting. What do you think Jesus is sneaking off to the wilderness to do? That's so He's good. He's staying humble. He's staying connected. I think pride may be the first sin. Yeah, there you go. It may be the first sin. Like when you look at Satan, yeah. the whole reason Satan fell out was because he started to look at himself and look say, at my man, beauty. Look, look at, at my what splendor. I'm doing. Look at how great I am. Look at how awesome I am. So I got, I got a question with this. Can you be humble and confident? A hundred percent, because the definition I was trying to read it is that it's a modest or accurate view of self. Yes. So it's direct. So I didn't read it at the end, but Romans 12 continues on to say, if you have the gift to encourage, encourage. If you have the gift to prophesy, prophesy. If you have the gift to give, give. Yep. Gift to teach, teach. You know, if you have the gift of leadership, lead. So what, what is it saying? It's saying, if you're gifted to do something, do it with all your strength, but recognize that where did that gift come from and what is it for? So good. I think that's the problem not that the we want to share some glory. Yeah, I'm not the source. He is. Yeah, I want, I, yeah. so I got to recognize, yeah. you know, where does this come from and what is, the, what is the ultimate end game here? So practically speaking, what does Chad Beach do to humble yourself? What it, give, give, yeah. let, let's just get like rubber meets a road. Yeah. These guys want to know what's a couple steps that they can do. Well, I think the, the, the number one, and this is kind of like I think the greatest cheat code to life in my opinion in the old testament when god was set in a king the first thing he would make them do was read and rewrite the law every day hey. and he made them do this he says because otherwise their hearts will be lifted above their brethren they get they get pride so good so if god made his kings read and write the bible every day how do we think that we're okay doing it whenever so to me it's like the greatest cheat code in the world is daily bible reading daily scripture daily you know we do a thing called soap where you just choose a scripture observation application prayer and that habit i think if you can develop that daily discipline will save you because no one wakes up going man i, I want to get rebuked today i'm so <laughs> i'm so happy to just I, yeah. I humbled yeah but in what front is of everybody what does it say second timothy 3 16 all scriptures god breathe and what is it useful for and is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in righteousness so the man of god or the woman of god may be fully equipped to do every work so what is it saying it's saying and all scripture when we read the scripture it's teaching it's rebuking it's correcting and training us so I don't even want to go to my dad and get rebuked today, but the scriptures are telling me you're an idiot. <laughs> you're cocky. You think this is about you again, don't you? And it's washing, scrubbing the motives of my heart. You know, my buddy Chris says this. He says, there's, there's really only a few ways that you listen to the Lord through prayer, through the Bible, 
through trusted advisors that's right or through painful circumstances <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that yeah. painful circumstances yeah, is yeah. when you are getting humbled so yeah. like you might as well choose to do one of the first three i'm that's a big exactly number right. four advocate that's, yeah, that's yeah, just yeah. the one i i continue uh, to choose number four <laughs> i felt it in my bones when yeah. you said i was like no yeah no, please yeah. stop so uh, what's one painful cert like if you want to just be transparent one yeah. painful circumstance that probably could have been avoided if you would have heard door number one two or three first well the first thing that comes to mind was, um, I'll never forget, in like 2003, I was dating a girl before my wife, and I know that God spoke to me and said, you need to break it off. Wow. But I delayed it for like seven months. And so I walked in like deliberate disobedience, delayed disobedience, and that's pride. And so, I, man, I'm telling you the devastation that was caused in that season, because, you know, you, you, you're kind of wondering, like, am I getting away with it? And dude, just my, I was listening to this book yesterday called The Power of Positive Thinking. Power of Positive Thinking. He was talking about energy. People that get tired, they're not connected to the, the source of energy, which so is good. God. Where does energy come from? The Bible talks about vitality, life, strength. Where does all that come from? God. When I'm prideful or when I'm disobedient, I lose all my vitality. What does David say? David said, when I kept secret, when I kept my sin secret, Psalm 34, when I kept quiet about my sin, silent about my sin, Day and night, your hand was heavy upon me, and my vitality was taken away like the feverish heat of the summer. Man. So this really speaks to me. Like, I went through a 10-year a season of addiction, and literally last year, I went to rehab. Literally a, a, a year ago. Wow. And uh, I was so tired, oh. and no one knew. I was a youth pastor here, just struggling, and no one knew. And when I finally opened up, and I finally said I need help. And when I finally was real, it's like, yeah, it hurt, but the energy came back. Energy. Why do you think that is? It's like you can't keep this, you can't keep it in. Is that just That's right? Why is that? Well, I think, you know, when Jesus says seven times, he, he goes, remain in me, remain in me, remain in me, remain in me. He's just kind of being like redundant, right? Because he's like, you're not hearing, you're not listening, remain in me, abide in me, abide in me. He goes, apart from me, you can do no good oh, thing. Oh, yeah. Yep. So you, when, when we got secret stuff going on, we're not connected to him. Right. We're not, you know? And so we got to get back to that Psalm 139 life. Search me, try me, test me. If I got anything, you're, you're like, that's not right. I can't get disconnected from the source of my strength. You yeah. know what's so great is that I struggle, and I know that I struggle with pride, but hearing you talk about it today, I was like, God, just get the junk out. Like I know yeah. that I know there's junk that's been crept in since, and I just want it to be out, dude. And that's for all of us. Yes, that, that's for all of us. You know, I think the the no ego amigo go low kind of concept for me started to really hit me of going like I can see how my pride is affecting my world. Yes, and there's areas where I've I've arrested it and and I'm humble, and there's other areas that I clearly am not. And so this has been the hard journey for me to really look in the mirror and go like, dude, say what you want. You're prideful in this area. That sucks. Yeah. Yes. Pride sucks. It does. It is hard. It's, it's a really hard area of our life for all of us to be really vulnerable and transparent. Like I want to be known. I want to be respected. I want to, um, you know, be, be appreciated. I, I, there's parts of me that like that's lurking. And so just to acknowledge it is like to, to deflate it or to defeat it. Right. Yeah, I've, I'm gonna close it out with this. There's guys watching right now. They're hopeless. They're having a hard time handing over control. They don't may they might not know how to hand over control to God. Yeah. They're at the end of the rope. They're struggling in their marriage as a father, as a son. What do you say to the guy that's at the end of the line? Yeah, man. Praise God. <laughs> the first thing I say is, man, come on. Yes. This is awesome. Yes. You know, the, the old saying, when you get to the end of yourself, you get to the beginning of God. Yes. And um, thank God you're being humbled. Thank God. We're yes. so happy that you confessed. Yes. We're so happy that you're so miserable that you're fi you're done. Yes. Yeah. You're so tired. <laughs> That's right? so good. And so thank God. And I, I, I just think that I would encourage you turn to God. Like just whether that's show up at church once a week whether that's watching a sermon, you know, once a week or every day, yes. reading the Bible, whatever you got to do, whatever turning to God looks like you practically, just keep 
turning to God, <laughs> find some Christian friends, find community, find, you know, a, a, a pastor that you really enjoy, you receive from. My brother told me this great story when I was here. He goes, hey, you remember so-and-so from high school? I was like, man, I remember that name a little bit. He's like, he was in my grade. Yeah, man, I, I remember his name a little bit. He goes, dude, he's been coming to church. I go, wow, that's amazing. He goes, he got so miserable. He got on YouTube, remembered that you were, saw you were a pastor, started watching your sermon late at night. He goes, he loved him so much, YouTube suggested my sermons. This guy from our high school drives two hours every Sunday to hear my brother preach. Wow. So awesome. And it's like, he's doing that because he's like, dude, this is my lifeline. Right. So for him, it looked like watching YouTubes and then driving two hours because he knows I'm going to die if I don't. Right. So if you're in that spot, do whatever you got to do to get life in you. And it's crazy you say that. I, the day I showed up, I, I literally told the director, I said, uh, I'm the most hopeless I've ever been. And he looked at me and said, this is the greatest day of your life. Come on. And some about that, I was like, the, I can't do it. Like, God, you're going to have to figure this out. Right. He's in control. And so would you, do you want to ask him just to pray over? Yeah, I was just going to say, look, there's guys listening to this right yeah. now that are at the end of the road. Sure. Praise the Lord. Congrats. Yeah. But I want you to, I want you to pray over him, look into the camera and just say, guys, I'm going to pray with you right now. And just yeah. whatever God's put on your heart. Yeah. Guys, let's um, let's humbly come before the Lord and ask him to help us. God, we pray for every guy that is struggling, hurt, feeling broken right now, feeling like they're at the end of themselves. I thank you, God, that you are near to those who are crushed in spirit. God, I pray that you give them the strength to lift their eyes to the mountains right now. Where does our help come? It comes from you, the maker of heaven and earth. I pray that you'd shower them right now with your mercy, with your presence, your faithfulness, God. Thank you that you are faithful when we are faithless. And I pray that you would start to bring healing, revive their soul. God, shower them right now with vision, calling, destiny. Speak life over them right now. They will live and not die. We declare it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. Dude, Man, you're awesome. awesome. Thanks. Man, thanks, thanks so much for the spirit channel. Thanks so much.